Ladies and gentlemen, uh, wise people, prophets, uh, Martin Hagland, uh, the author of This Life, they'll warn you, your time here on earth is limited. You are a finite being. You only have so much time. You shouldn't be watching this video because you're so busy. I spend too much time watching videos, which we'll talk about. So, I want to talk about time today. I want to talk about wasted time. When are you wasting time? For the last 10 years, I have probably spent over 10,000 hours looking at watches. I look at watch videos. I read about watches. Uh, I look at watches. Uh, I wear a diver watch. I'm not a diver. I'm a fraud. I'm an imposter. I'm a mountebank. Wearing a diver watch. Don't even dive. Now, I don't do it as much now because I recognize that I have an addictive personality and I have to be careful, put some boundaries on. But you know, even though I, I don't watch a lot of watch videos anymore, I watch some, but I got to be careful. Too much candy for the little boy. <clears throat> you know, I watch other videos. I'll watch videos about laptops. I'll watch videos about Chromebooks, mechanical keyboards, car reviews, uh, old Jerry Seinfeld videos from the 80s, old vintage Genesis and Peter Gabriel concerts. Uh, I could spend my whole life just burning my time watching uh, YouTube videos. Now regarding watches, the 10,000 hours I spent in the last 10 years looking at watches, that doesn't even count my inner life. The inner life, having dreams about watches. Sometimes I would have dreams that the watch was grafted onto my flesh, which reminds me there is an insane episode of Lost in Space where the evil, cowardly, sniveling Dr. Zachary Smith, a castaway, he turns into a celery stock. I think I was turning into a watch stock, so I had to cut back on my uh, watch videos. You gotta watch the Lost in Space episode where um, Dr. Smith, he's, his skin is grafted into a celery stock. It is insane! So uh, I'm trying to not waste time watching too many videos and uh, you know what, man? You can even watch videos that analyze the effect of watching videos and watch analysis about the analysis of the effects of watching too many videos. Meta-analysis of watching YouTube videos. Talk about spending your time. You know, my wife, uh, she spends a lot of time, too, uh, listening to her Game of Thrones podcasts. Binge mode. Maybe she spent 10,000 hours uh, of the last eight years uh, studying Game of Thrones. I love the show. <clears throat> I get lost into it, but she she knows the subtext, the contextualization of it, all the characters' names. She's on another level than I am. So the question is, um, at what point are we wasting our time? Look, man, we all have to chillax to use some kind of insane term. We all uh, have very busy lives, we need mental breaks, we need recreation, we need hobbies, we need to, to take a break. But my question is, at what point is taking a break transitioning into a reckless disregard for your time and therefore your life? And when I think of a reckless disregard for your time, I think of a movie called Groundhog Day, starring Phil Connors. Yes, Bill Murray plays Phil Connors. Once Phil Connors realizes <clears throat> he's living the same day over and over again, that he can't die, he just treats his life with reckless disregard. Um, I'm thinking of some of my students who tell me their older brother dropped out of college and now he's, uh, he's just living in his mom's basement, uh, spending the time in bed all day uh, watching uh, Netflix, watching uh, BoJack Horseman. And uh, he's done. He's checked out of life. At what point are we checking out of life? And that's, that's a great question because um, I, I'm not sure that we can draw the line clearly. I think for some of us, it's easier than others. For example, Stephen King writes a lot of horror novels uh, and a lot of nonfiction too. He's a smart guy. I follow him on Twitter. And um, 
I'm going to assume that as a, as a novelist, Stephen King has a quota of how many words he's going to write a day. Maybe he writes 2,000 words a day. That wouldn't surprise me if he wrote between one and 3,000 words a day. So for Stephen King, he can't be spending too much time on anything if it's compromising his quota. So for Stephen King, you know, time management kind of becomes simple. For those of us who have some sort of um, professional or artistic goal that's specifically uh, outlined, I think it's easy to draw the line. At what point is our uh, watching uh, this or that video compromising our productivity? Uh, however, just because you do focused work doesn't necessarily mean you're spending your time that wisely either. For example, David Brooks, who's a New York Times uh, editorial writer, and he also writes books. One of my favorites is Bobo's in Paradise. I bought his new book about morality and happiness. I haven't read it. can't even remember the title. I think it's called The Mountain or something. But I heard him on the Ezra Klein podcast saying that for him, he was spending a lot of time doing really productive work, but even that was a waste of time because he was using work as a smokescreen to keep people out of his life. He wasn't uh, spending time doing meaningful friendships. I don't know about you, I'm terrible about that. My old buddy who I've known for 25 years, the wrestling coach at my college, he came over two days ago, I think it was, yes. Man, I hadn't seen him in so long. I hadn't seen him in a year. And it was nice hanging out with him. But I'm terrible at um, investing time into friendships. You know, last night my wife went out with her friends and watched Game of Thrones, the final episode. I watched it alone. That pretty much defines the difference between my wife and me. So, Stephen King has it easy in terms of defining when you cross the line, when you're wasting time. Uh, there are three books by Cal Newport where he studies how you uh, focus on deep work. Well, one's called Deep Work, one's called Digital Minimalism, and the other one is called so good they can't ignore you and he researches the connection between being able to sustain long chunks of time in your day on singular focused hard deep work and happiness satisfaction self-fulfillment and one of the things I learned from reading his books when I teach them uh, to my students one of the things I learned is is that uh, deep meaningful work uh, it does give you this satisfaction and the contrast in this age of uh, digital madness where we just go down rabbit holes on social media, getting in social media squabbles. One of the, the distinguishing characteristics of the madness of the digital age is distraction addiction. You know, uh, opening up another tab and another tab and another tab when you were supposed to be on that first tab. And, and people who are addicted to distraction are uh, very anxious and very depressed. Now again, David Brooks learned that just because you eliminate these distractions and just focus on your work, that's not necessarily a, a cure-all, an elixir, especially if, if you're using that, your deep work to push away uh, meaningful friendships. Something I'm terrible at, I, I realized that after ha hanging out with uh, the wrestling coach uh, for the first time in a long time, so there's no guarantee that if you're doing deep work. But uh, I want to continue to cut back on my uh, YouTube video watching. Gosh, it's so addicting uh, to, to see a new watch review or, a, uh, or a, uh, a laptop review or a mechanical keyboard review. There's something scintillating and enticing. It's some kind of like fishing lure in the ocean. I'm, I'm some kind of barracuda drawn to that shiny object. On the, uh, on the internet page. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, tell me what you think. Ha do you have a, a strong line between distracting yourself uh, as a hobby, whether it be watching YouTube videos or something else, and then transitioning into reckless disregard for your time? Do you have a system that allows you to make that demarcation line? Let me know what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time, I'm out.